Hi, my name is Enia Matthews, or Annie for short. I'm the research services librarian for the Douglas and Henry Regional Academic Centers. Um, I also help plan the outreach events for the library. And the outreach event for December will be about grief. So we are acknowledging National Grief Awareness Week, which is December 2nd through December 7th. And today I am joined with Dr. Nadia Barnett, who is the assistant professor and coordinator in the Department of Human Services and Psychology. And she will be answering questions about grief and how we can cope with that. So thank you, Dr. Nadia, uh, for being here with me today and for answering these questions. <laughs> thank you very much. And I appreciate the invitation. You're welcome. So my first question is, what is grief and what does that look like? So grief is an experience or um, some would say a part of life that one would live with that occurs when we um, lose someone or something uh, that we anticipated would always be there. Um, and so grief can come from either a loss of a person, a loss of a job, a loss of um, a future with maybe someone that you thought you would have a life with. It can, it can be as a result of many life experiences. What it looks like could range through a lot of different emotions, whether that's sadness, um, sometimes you can be happy when you reflect on the memories. Um, it can be frustrating. It can ha have moments of confusion. Um, ultimately, you can't grieve unless you, um, or not unless, you cannot grieve what you don't feel. So grief is connected to our emotions. And I, I want to lay the precedent for that, um, that it's really emotion and, and thought driven. What are the misconceptions about grief that people may have? The number one misconception is that you can move on, um, that you, a person can move on, move forward um, as easily as saying move on. Um, Another misconception about grief has to do with timing, that a person has a certain amount of time to grieve and then that's it. Um, grieving or a person grieving or the process of grief that a person goes through is very individualized to that individual. And based upon the support that they have in place, based upon their current state of mental wellness, um, their journey can be weeks, months, years, decades. It really depends on the person. Um, so during the pandemic, a lot of people have died. Um, how can students, faculty and staff who have been impacted by that, how can they find the support that they need? Uh, great question. And, you know, I am, so not only do I cover this program of human services in the um, human services psychology department, but I'm also a licensed professional counselor as well. And so my recommendation would be to be open with the people that are loving and supportive of you um, and of you not moving on or getting over your grief but of you allowing your experience to become a part of who you are and embracing that life experience as a, as a connection to yourself, just like you have a birthday every year and you can remember your birthday last year, um, you're always going to remember the loss and it's, it's always gonna be a part of you. So having, um, or creating or identifying those individuals in your life that have reached out to you, that um, embrace you and support you and that they and love and care for you unconditionally, stay connected with those individuals, open up and share with them your day-to-day -day journey. It's a day-to-day -day journey. It's not a year long, it's every day 
it may be different. And having someone that you can talk to and speak to and share memories and share your thoughts to get them out because you're thinking them and it really is important to get them out. Um, I would say that um, I wouldn't be concerned about feeling weak or feeling bad or um, feeling like you don't want people to have pity on you. Those can be very negative thoughts that could keep a person trapped in their in a very bad space as it relates to their grief journey. Um, and if you have people in your life that are willing to listen, then I would lean on your social support system. Um, lastly, or two more things. I would also look and see if you can find a specific grief support group. And as it relates to grief, remember, and, and as I shared from the beginning, grief can happen and, and occur for a variety of different losses. Well, there are support groups that are out there for those variety of different losses, whether that you lost someone to cancer, whether that you um, lost um, or, or have experienced several miscarriages. There are specific support groups that will um, that are uh, that are available to provide an outlet for the specific type of grief that you're dealing with. And I would seek those out and utilize the World Wide Web, the internet as an option to just Google in your area what's available. And lastly, don't be afraid to seek counseling. You are able to, um, whether that is here at Mercer University through our two counseling centers on Macon and one at Macon and there's one on the Atlanta campus, Therapists are available and here for you as a student, as faculty, as staff. If you know someone that is struggling, I would also encourage that individual to seek counseling, seek a therapist, someone that they can really express and really be vulnerable with their journey and with their emotional experience related to the loss. Are there any apps that people can use to help them with their grief? Absolutely. Um, and I have found a couple, uh, a couple of just regular apps and then um, three specific to children and adolescents. And so uh, first there's Headspace. Um, some of you may have seen commercials. They, they're a, a pretty um, a bigger company because they actually have commercials on television. Um, there's an app called Grief Support Network. And there's an app called My Grief Angels. Now, as it relates to children and adolescents, and um, I want to make sure that um, if you're dealing with the loss, especially if it's a loss of a loved one and you have kids, they might be experiencing some type of loss as well and not really know what to do with all of those emotions. So there's an app called Lilies. There's an app called A Part of Me. And one more that's specific to ages four through 12, it's called Nino's Morning Tool, Toolbox. Nino's Morning Toolbox. So those are six apps that I have found that um, are specific to helping individuals deal with their grief journey and their grief experience. If a person has never lost a loved one, how can they uh, be there for those who have? Great question. One, number one key is to listen. Allow that person that you care about that has lost someone, something um, in their lives, allow them space to talk and share and be open and vulnerable and listen. Um, I can't really emphasize that enough. Um, just having someone that is open and willing to hearing their uh, variety of emotions that they're experiencing and normalize for them that it's okay. It's okay to be one moment you wake up, you're thinking you're having a great day and then something happens that triggers a memory of, your, of the person you've lost or of the idea or future that you thought you would have and then you're sad. It's okay to have those emotions and it's, it really is 
like an emotional roller, emotional roller coaster as it relates to the grief journey. Um, and so ha- being there to listen, being there to normalize for your loved one um, or the person you care for, that it's okay um, and you're here to listen. And lastly, I would maybe ask in that moment, not in, not in that day, not in that week, not in the month, because that might be too much, too, too much time um, in advance. But in that moment that you're listening, I would ask, is there anything I can do for you now? In this moment right now, what can I do for you? If you are face-to-face with, with the individual, it might be a hug. It might be um, holding hands. It might be bringing a cup of tea. You never know, but allow that person to think about um, and to begin thinking about how can someone help me? Excuse me. How can someone in this moment help me? That is very helpful for someone that is struggling with their grief journey, trying to make sense of their experience to pull people in and realize that they're not experiencing this on their own and they have people that love and care for them and support them through their journey as well. And to think about how can someone help me? What is it that I need right now that could help me in this vulnerable space, in this vulnerable moment? Um, Is anxiety a normal part of the grief process? Absolutely. Absolutely. We get anxious because if it's whatever type of loss it is, our anxiety may develop with regards to what if this happens again? What do I do? How will I survive if this thing happens to me again? And we get worried and concerned about emotionally surviving um, a loss uh, as significant as we've experienced. So whether it's a loss of a child, whether it's a loss of a pet, um, whether it's a loss of a job and you get another job, you're going to have, you're going to have some anxious, anxious moments. Those are absolutely normal. And those are times and spaces and opportunities to talk it through with someone, whether it be a professional or whether it be with your loving and supportive social network. What are some ways that we can healthily cope with loss during like the day-to-day basis? The number one um, suggestion that I would have on a day-to-day basis would be to give yourself some grace. Be patient with yourself and your journey. And it's okay to have or experience all of the emotions all at once. And it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. It's okay that it doesn't make sense. But give yourself time to make it through today. And just focus on today. And um, if your home is a space of refuge, then if you can make it home, then you've made it through and you're okay. Or if you have loved ones that are waiting for you to embrace you with traditional um, or routine uh, dinners or however your loved ones are supporting you, just think if I can just get to meet um, my, my loved one for dinner, I'm good. If I can just make it home, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Um, if I can see my pet, I'm good. So think about in the day, what are those moments that are really, uh, the most comforting and utilize that as your guide to, I just have to get to this most comforting support, supportive environment. And then I know that I've survived today. So the holidays are coming out, but they're not a happy time for everybody. So how can we, like, what can we do for those who are grieving, like during Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's? Absolutely. The holidays can really be um, a sore spot um, for a lot of people for many different reasons, and especially because of uh, grieving loss. Um, And one of the things that I would say is to the individual that has had a loss 
and is not looking forward to the holidays is to really pinpoint what is it specifically about the Thanksgiving holiday, Christmas or New Year, or just the whole, the, all three of them together. What is it specifically that you are most not looking forward to? The more specific you can be, the better that you can then move to plan. If you have a plan in place and you can strategize, I'm not looking forward to this specific moment or this specific tradition, then you can plan, what are you gonna do when that time comes around? Whether it's, whether it's you don't, you're not, in a, you're not in a space to sit down at the family time for Thanksgiving and eat together. An option could be, well, you can attend late. You can come after that family time where everyone's sitting together and everyone is, um, if it's tradition that everyone share what they're thankful for. And if that's a moment that really takes you to a space of missing your loved ones the most, you can miss that time. You can come a little bit later. I'm sure that your loved ones will have plenty of food for you to eat. Um, but that's, that's what I would suggest is to one, specifically think about what it is that you are not looking forward to and then plan what are you going to do in that moment. And the more narrow you can be, I think the better it will be um, to strategize, but also it's not as overwhelming when you think about the totality of the holidays and it's four days for Thanksgiving break. And, you know, between Christmas and New Year's, it's two whole weeks. That's a lot of, a lot of time. And if you can pinpoint what about your family tradition that reminds you of, of your loved one or your family tradition that reminds you of something that maybe you won't have because of a loss, what can you put in its place and create your own tradition moving, not moving forward, but um, in your life, your own tradition that will help you during the holiday. It's not going to make it um, uh, less, um, it's not going to make you forget the person that you've lost less, but it will help with you being able to not sink so deep into a dark place, right? And that's really the key is we're, we're the strategizing and the planning is to help you not sink so low because then it's really hard to bring you back up after the new year and everything, you know, everybody goes back to work and, and you're having to get back into the swing of things. It's much, much harder to jump right back in if you're so far down. So how can we keep you from sinking um, is, would be my suggestions. Uh, and my last question is, if somebody is reluctant to get help with their grief, what would you say to encourage them to reach out to get assistance? Absolutely. I would first start with whatever their thoughts that they're having about uh, in their grief process, write it down, get it out. Sometimes in our uh, grief, we can become our own pressure cookers. We can become pressure cookers. And um, I love that description because if you think about a pressure cooker, um, as it's getting hot and the steam and all of that inside, you know, the the pot or the, the utensil that it's in is also expanding and it needs to, it, it, it needs to be open to let out some of that tension. Um, otherwise it could explode. So as our own individual pressure cookers, we don't want you to explode. So we have to let some of that out little by little, and that will help decompress. And part of letting that out could be related to journaling, writing out your thoughts, writing out your feelings, writing a letter to the to your loved one. If you have if you're ruminating over things that you may have wanted to share with them, get them out on paper. Write it out things that you've wanted to share, things that you wanted to say and you didn't get a chance to say. I would journal that write letters. I would also 
in your social support network, seek comfort. You may not feel uh, vulnerable enough to say, I'm really struggling in this loss, but you can say, would you like to come over and just hang out? Or if it's offered, would you like to come over and hang out? Yes. And just being around people and being in an environment that's comforting, that's loving, can be helpful through your process. And that will, little by little, of being in a comforting environment, looking out um, and identifying those individuals that love you unconditionally and are supportive of you, and writing and getting your thoughts out, hopefully over time, you'll be able to get to the point of being vulnerable enough to then share and share uh, most, most of the time the sh with individuals that struggle with holding everything in, um, the sharing actually comes out when they're trying to help someone else that they've noticed either is struggling with loss and they will begin to share. And it's through that sharing um, that it becomes comfortable. Once you get comfortable talking about it, then it, it becomes normal. It becomes just a part of you that I've, I'm, I've lost, I've lost a job. I've lost a baby. I've lost um, a, a husband or a fiance or whether it's from a breakup and, you know, you've lost this idea of this future that you've had. Um, a loss is a loss and your, your body and your um, brain doesn't process either of the losses different, even though they're different types of losses that we can experience, your brain doesn't process it as different, as anything different. You still have the same emotions. Um, and there are people that are here that will love you and care for you and therapists that are here to help you as well. Well, that was my last question. Um, thank you so much for taking the time, Dr. Barnett, to answer these questions. Um, I really hope this interview, uh, this Q&A, like really helps the students, faculty and staff here at Mercer who are grieving. Um, and for any more questions about any outreach events um, that you may have, you can go to libraries.mercer.edu. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.